Well, hello everybody and welcome back down into the basement dungeon gardens for kind of the weekly look around at what's growing on down here and how some of these various indoor gardening experiments are coming along. I'm actually pretty pleased with what's going on with that 40 watt Sansia light, so we'll probably start there. And then I have some rather surprising news from the indoor tomato garden that we're definitely going to get to. So without too much further blah 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 from me, we might as well get to the actual plants involved in today's video. Gonna start with true confessions, I haven't watered in a couple of days, so you're about to see some dry soil. However, we can see that the parsley here that was being transferred over from the aquaponics, some of them have definitely perked up. I mean this one's looking fantastic, so that's very exciting little spider plant back here. I got spider plants all over the house. One day I hope to have an aloe for every spider plant, but all things in time. This little flaming caddy here. It's getting on time to wash some leaves around this basement garden, but it's incredibly dusty down here. Otherwise, it seems to be growing quite nicely towards... This is that uh, 40 watt bulb that Sansi sent me. Looking down at the pepper tray again it looks to me like there's some significant leaf growth between last week and this week and it does seem like we've got a nice darker shade of green going on with these plants I haven't gotten around to trimming little flower bulbs off of say the garden salsas yet or any of that and like I said it's been a couple of days since I watered so therefore it's been a couple of days since they've been painted for aphids so the goldfish will like the coming snack, but either way, I think we've learned an interesting lesson about indoor lighting quality when it comes to um, at least growing peppers. This is not necessarily the highest Kelvin rating, like this is clearly not a 65,000 K bulb or anything like that. I'd say it's closer to the, to the 5,000 range, but the intensity of it really does seem to be helping the plants along. So I think with that in mind, I may actually start using that old shop light that we got. Um, I think it's got two big cob style 36 watt LED lights in it. it. We use it upstairs for the spider plants right now, but they don't really need it. So if I can get some more light down here, I might just do that. That's about that same spectrum. Pretty close, pretty close. Anyway, we got the mini DWC garden over here that is slowly becoming my kale bed. And uh, there's good reason for that. I mean, that's some good sturdy leaf kale going on there. And some good sturdy kale, some good sturdy kale. And it's everywhere in here. Starting to get some root growth on the most recent ones that are in there. The peppers are not doing well, so I am slowly phasing them out still. And I'm just going to cover up the, the empty holes or fill them with kale. Maybe try some shard in here too. Just leafy greens. Seems to do alright in there. But I have noticed that the color of this water, well, kind of absent. What we've really got going on there is some assorted bits of muck on the bottom. So I think it's time to mix... Oh, that's not good makes a new batch of nutrients. There goes the end of a beautiful new pitcher. That's tragic that is. Had to move this thing because it's gotten a whole bunch of new growth in the last little while. Discovered it was sneaking around the back of the DWC bin here so it's hanging off its sling again. There are a lot of places where it looks like we might have some new pitchers coming in. So that is exciting as we are getting closer to insect season and there they've got to be um, I want to say a dozen locations on here that could put on pitchers finally be a little more comfortable to cut these dead ones off but this plant well, there's this new growth it's killing me it's alive it's dead it's alive it's dead it just does not know what it wants to do Oh, I feel really bad about that, though. Dang. Anyway, today's lesson, pay attention to what you're doing, Mr. Bear. Let's swing around to the Darwin table here. For the oregano that I transplanted out of the aquaponics is very, very pale. Focus, little camera. 
but that looks like some new growth in there so over the next couple days I'll probably take off this old stuff and hopefully we can get some more plant growing oregano is one of those things I just love having it fresh you know when you're feeling a little under the weather a little sprig of oregano some basil a little bit of ginger throw that in your uh, French press make yourself a nice infusion it does wonders for you I tell you what here we got one of the mystery peppers from the compost got some wrinkling going on which according to something I was reading this morning might be a calcium deficiency wouldn't surprise me too much got that Ahigayana back here so it's putting on flowers last time we looked at it and there are still kind of a couple of them in there very much looking like it's uh, ready to be watered the reaper down here this poor reaper this poor poor reaper has been through so much and yet I still force it to suffer I think I think I might just be calling it on this plant soon but at the same time it's still alive so I might just throw it outside and say this is your last chance to perform do what you can because yeah last chance then looking in between the lights there we can see this plant is doing surprisingly well we've got some branching off going on there so that's all right the new roots that are growing out of the bottom of it are much sturdier than what was there originally so I guess it's getting used to its situation it's getting used to uh, that's just the powdery blue miracle grow I believe it's tomato and vegetable formula it's like an 18 18 21 pretty standard easy to find didn't expect it to work kind of nutrient here we've got the transplanted peppers this one's definitely shown some nice signs of growth what do we got there that's the Caribbean red habanero these are doing fairly well for me this year it's, it's very nice little tiny spider plants I gotta do something with those this is the ooh, the Batman's Hell's Bells again they could use a, a shake to get rid of some aphids but all in all they're doing pretty well now these kale are not anywhere near as thick in the leaf as the ones in the DWC so they are eventually going to get moved over providing they, they live that long oh we've got the little bag pepper experiment which I don't think has fully died yet so we might see this for a few more weeks as long as I remember to stay on top of watering it because this particular bag it can feel the moisture in there but this particular bag seems to be shedding that moisture pretty quick and down here we've got the good old-fashioned seed tray there are quite a few things that have popped up and we had some oddities you know a couple things that had popped up and then the top just kind of disappeared so I think there's a pest in there somewhere got one true leaf coming up on that one what is this Devil's Tongue Yellow. Ooh. Very exciting, very exciting. So I'm trying to keep it covered, trying to stay well behaved and all that junk. And once things start to get proper true leaves, I'll start transplanting them out. But until then, leaving it nicely contained. Trying so hard to be good. But before we get too far from the Darwin table, I wanted to show you what's going on. Well, I guess we got to start over here anyway. Grab the tomato. There's one poor, very haggard looking tomato, and we'll get back under regular light to show you this. Not a happy looking plant so far, is it? But apparently, it's a yellow tomato variety because it has ripened up, and I hadn't really noticed under that funky light, but I have a ripe little tomato here so that is flipping adorable uh, a dungeon tomato I grew a tomato in my basement over the course of winter still snow outside and I got a mater still a totally pointless project and uh, I don't think that I should be encouraging myself to be growing tomatoes down in the basement but how cute is that one mater amongst a field of mint as you can see, I haven't uh, adjusted things here quite like I was talking about, but I did do a little cleaning in the parsley patch. 
they seem to have four little parsleys that have made it through so between these and the ones that are transferred to the soil I'm doing all right doesn't take a lot of parsley to make meals go around around here this sage trimmed this back just the other day to oh, I'll take that to have some drying upstairs it's always good to have dry sage on hand the tricolor sage back there this is part of why I want to rearrange things it's not getting enough light but this has definitely grown since I put it over in this spot versus being in this spot so yes if I move these two mints and put the sages there then maybe they'll look like these guys because I mean that's massive right I'd love to have some sage production like that anyway I wanted to make sure I share that with you <laughs> my little yellowy orange tomato can't believe it Still no signs of ripe red on this indigo rose, but very funky. It took the purple really, really well under this light. And I've got a couple of offshoots here. So I might just be able to take some cuttings from this. We are getting kind of closer to when reasonable people start tomatoes. So it might not be a bad idea. And thinking of tomatoes, I was checking out this little tiny one here and lo and behold I hope those are coming up in the camera there are little tiny flower nubs on that a couple of shoots on the bottom could potentially be useful when it comes time to clone new tomatoes for the season so it's all very interesting but that that just blows me away I got a ripe tomato oh yeah don't want to come off but I got a ripe tomato all the same and that brings us back to the world of more standard lighting and the overwintered kind of in danger zone of the garden. Seems to me that these fluorescents are fading a little bit, not quite as bright as the, the ones over the Darwin table. And uh, I was looking up at the local hardware store and they do have LED tube replacements for standard fluorescent fixtures, like I should be able to just click them right in, but they're only at 5000 Kelvin. So I was kind of sketchy about that. But seeing how that Sansi bulb was doing, I'm thinking maybe that's not as much of an issue as uh, I had previously led myself to believe. And then the other part that's kind of holding me back with that too is they're almost $30 each. And I think that's just a little outrageous because I can buy the two fluorescent bulbs for 10 or one fluorescent replacement LED for 30 one it's not a two pack it's one bulb so that aggravates me a little bit new technology is frustratingly overpriced for people who would really like to embrace it anyway this is the only thing down here that's really not kind of overwintered in this section this is another caribbean red habanero it's my tester experimenter for the dwc garden and uh it's still looking pretty good. We got some nice root growth going on in there. Not growing up as much as maybe I might like, but it is it is starting to spread. So we'll see. And once I either replace this with a couple of fluorescents, which is a technology I don't like, or a couple of LEDs, which is overpriced, I can't win on either way with that. But uh, once I replace those, we might see some more growth because we'll have better light quality going on down there. But what do you say to wrap it up today I give a taste of my first ever fully grown fully ripened sprouted downstairs fertilized or pollinated downstairs ripened downstairs dungeon mater and we'll wrap this up for the day oh very exciting so it is still a little bit green on this back side here but I'm not really that worried about it hmm hmm that is delicious. That is so delicious, I'm not even sharing. I am, however, not going to eat that totally green bit, but, mmm. Dungeon Maters. All right, you know what? That is, uh, that's an achieved goal right there. Yummy. All right, if you're still around here, thank you so much for, uh, hanging out and enjoying these weekly garden updates as I struggle through the winter spring yeah 
in theory it's coming I know for sure summer will get here eventually so hopefully we'll get to see some of these plants growing you know in a more natural environment under some natural Sun but until then I'll just keep farting around under my lights down in the dungeon and we can all learn about LEDs versus fluorescence versus standard and just cheap lights and expensive lights and cheap fertilizers and expensive fertilizers and well all this stuff that I dabble with really so yeah stick around we'll learn together and hopefully We'll all still be together when it comes time to garden outside. All right, take care, everybody.